good afternoon friends today i am meeting you through this zoom platform i am going to speak on medical legal aspect in postpartum hemorrhage at the outset i would like to thank dgf forum dr sharda madam and all the organizing committee member for giving me this opportunity to be a part of you today whenever we talk about medical legal the first thing which comes in our mind that is ignorance of law is no excuse and that's why if you want to prevent the litigation you must know the laws it is said that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure prevention is always better than cure and you can prevent the litigation only by getting knowledge this is the way which practice which uh, we are every the topic for today is the medical legal aspects of pph see the topic uh, as such i don't agree with such topics there are nothing like medical legal aspect of pph or medical legal aspect of labor room or operation theater these kind of topics are basically uh, irrelevant but what we want to learn the principle of laws because whether it is pph whether it is labor room whether it is operation theater whether it is cesarean we should these similar principles will apply and we should know the principles of law because they remains the same why to discuss medical legal aspect of pph the reason is a 50% of the criminal and consumer cases filed against obstetricians are directly or indirectly related to pph and that is the reason why we should learn how to tackle this problem first of all law cannot teach you medicine if you follow the standard guidelines given to you by the medicine then law cannot you have cannot held you liable and that's why we should have our own standard operating procedures and we should follow those procedure to prevent problems to prevent uh, problems in pph we should have an preventive approach what is that see if you want to prevent litigation then you must have antenatal counseling sessions with the patient and the relatives before patient undergoes delivery why it is necessary because during antenatal counseling one session you should have that unexpected complications which can occur during your delivery and if you explain this pph in that session then it will become more palatable in one of the case it is mentioned that antenatal history should be taken in detail particularly obstetric history should be taken in detail one case of uh, in punjab where doctor delivered a second para and second para developed pph doctor shifted the patient to chandigarh in tertiary care but ultimately patient succumbed in that case it was said by the relatives of the patient that doctor never asked us the obstetric history otherwise this patient could have saved could have been saved because in first delivery also she uh, was affected by pph so for not taking proper history detailed history of first delivery doctor was held liable under law proper antenatal checkups and investigation should be done as we all know that in the era of uh, this uh, cesarean rate is increasing day by day and now we are getting more patients of previous cs and previous 2 cs so in those cases we must rule out uh, placenta accreta or placenta percreta we must go for color doppler or sonography to rule out the placenta accreta and percreta proper investigation should be done in all the antenatal patients we must predict see there are always signals where we can uh, pretend or predict that in which patient pph will occur suppose 
in twin operate uh, twin delivery there are more chances in placenta previa there are more chances in placenta egrita there are more chances of pph whenever there is less abdomen again the chances of pph are more uh, multiparity again the chances of pph are more so we should predict first that in which patient pph can occur and whenever there you predict the pph in a particular patient you should always be more careful in that patient and manage blood in such patient with high prediction so we must be ready with the blood before undertaking delivery it is always better to deliver such patient in tertiary centers because they may need a further care timely diagnosis is also for, uh, important say whenever pph occur immediately we must diagnose it whether it is traumatic or whether it is coagulation failure or whether it is a, a atonic pph so diagnosis should be documented specifically so we must reach to some diagnosis after examination that whether it is uh, atonic pph or traumatic pph diagnosis must be justified with the findings now in one of the case in gujarat one doctor put a diagnosis of atonic pph but on per abdomen examination he has nowhere mentioned that uterus is relaxed or not contracted so your diagnosis must be justified with your findings so if you have to write your findings in detail which justifies your uh, diagnosis investigations should be done timely and to be documented with time time of collection of investigation and time of receiving report should also be mentioned diagnosis must be justified with investigation report so if you suspect that patient is undergoing dic then when you have collected the sample when you have advised the investigation everything is to be mentioned in details follow standard practice in treatment treatment should be done timely see what is standard practice how court will decide what is standard practice so standard practice means something which is men mentioned in your standard textbooks something which is mentioned in some index journals something which is taught by the teachers to their students in colleges something which is uh, uh, practiced by your peer group so dear friends uh, you must follow the standard efforts to manage blood or blood products to be documented so whatever efforts you have made to get the blood as early as possible should be documented in the case paper better to call for help never shy in calling your senior and expert people for help in such situation emergency medicines should always be available in your hospital and always check the expiry date before giving that never prescribe emergency medicine to patients who have who are serious while uh, during the treatment always whenever you treat the patient anesthetist should lead the team documentation is of vital importance because in court of law only document will speak something which is not documented will be considered as not done document should be a minute to minute basis now that doesn't mean that you should stop treating the patient and start documenting but after the incidents when you start documenting the documentation should be on minute to minute basis so that we can uh, whenever we treat the patient, serious patient we must document that at what particular time what treatment was given to the patient write detailed operative notes operative notes always should be in detail if anything has happened during surgery then also you should mention the reason of taking a particular decision is to be documented so if you have taken some other some decision while treating the patient or operating the patient you must document the reason behind that decision of surgery should be taken timely so in cases of atonic pph or uh, something else if you uh, have taken decision to ligate the internal iliac or uh, to remove the, uh, to uh, do the obstetric hysterectomy then decision of surgery should be taken timely uh, to save the life of the patient vital decisions like removal of uterus should be preferably be taken by at least two gynecologists so whenever you are calling your colleague you must take help of your colleague and with both doctors should document that what is their opinion and why they have taken decision of removal of uterus all doctors involved in the treatment should put their findings and advise 
given in their own handwritings. Timely shifting is major important thing because most of the cases of PPH that are been decided by the court because doctors have not shifted the patient timely for, to the tertiary center for tertiary care. Timely shifting should be done for tertiary care. Shifting consent should be taken from the relatives. Now, the shifting consent should contain what is the reason of shifting the patient, uh, what, was the, what, are the, what was the condition of patient at the time of shifting and what alternatives you had given to the patient. Because later on, sometimes patient may say that I, I could have been referred by God to the government hospital, but doctor deliberately shifted to me uh, to a uh, private hospital where I had to bear expenses a lot. Shifting, we must keep in mind that shifting is the responsibility of treating doctor and treating doctor or anesthetist should accompany the patient with all emergency care available during shifting. Never try to shift the burden of mishap on other hospital by shifting very serious patient. So whenever patient is very serious, first stabilize the patient and then uh, shift the patient. And at the time of shifting, you must hand over a refer sheet so that the person who is receiving can know that what is the condition of the patient and what treatment is already been given. Although not mandatory, but take consent of relative. Whenever you take such decision on table of removing uterus or doing some other surgery, then uh, it is better to inform uh, relatives who are waiting outside and take consent. Separate consent for blood transfusion, separate consent for subsequent surgery, if you are doing any consent of refusal, if applicable, to be taken. So, in general guidelines, that never panic. Death does not per se proves that you are negligent. Do treatment as per medical standards. Operate at place with all facilities available. It is preferred. Call for help. Senior and experienced person, you can call for help. Never play blame game. Don't try to allegate anesthetist or any member of your team uh, and uh, put responsibility on a particular head. Anesthetist should lead the team. Keep emergency box always ready. Proper minute-to-minute -minute documentation should be done. Always better to have a rush team in your area. Foxy as well as IMA has said that every area should have their rush team so that if any mishap will happen, then at least a few of our colleagues can gather immediately on a phone call. Ship the patient if needed justifiably. Frequent communication and counseling to be done with the relatives who are waiting outside. So whenever patient is serious, it is a good habit that what is happening inside should be frequently explained to the patient who are waiting outside. All counselling should be documented in writing and or be on video. Communication with staff member. So whenever something happens, some mishap happens like PPH or something else, then we must communicate with our staff member so that everything, every word of your staff member and uh, from your side to the relatives will be same. If there is any discrepancy in the statements, then it may cause problem for you. We all know there is a, this is the era of procedure specific consent and the only solution to this is www.consentfordoctor.com. You can get consent of all surgeries procedure specific consents on this website. Why I have put this? Because your uh, labor consent or instrumental delivery consent or caesarean consent should be elaborative, exhaustive and it should even contain uh, obstetric hysterectomy also. So, uh, you should take proper consent. In case of death, clean blood stained drapes and floor, check OT equipments, save used materials, whatever you have used, catheters in place, uh, let the catheters in place or IV line in place. Check the ET because sometimes it shifts to esophagus. Uh, so check that whether it is in trachea or not. Close abdomen with mop count if patient has died during caesarean section. Check expiry dates of all the medicine. Breaking the bad news is a very difficult job. You can follow the guidelines of spikes. Spikes means you should sit in your chair with confidence. You should start explaining to the relatives and see first that how much 
they are uh, perce uh, per perceiving and allow them to interact allow uh, give them knowledge that what has happened why it has happened and you should always be empathetic whenever some bad news is there you, you should strategize and you should summarize what has happened with the patient to the relatives documentation again it is vitally important your document should be in chronological order should be complete accurate legible and no extraneous information should be there in document document should be completed as early as possible after the incidents and keep document in safe custody because it is seen that many a times relatives snatches the record and it create, creates problem for us death certificate whenever any mishap happens hmm, never issue death certificate on written request of relative or police when you are not sure about the cause of death and we also always guide that even if you are sure regarding cause of death even if you are sure that death is due to pph but it is always better to ask for ppm post mortem because if post mortem report will be in your favor then you can be saved directly but if it is not in your favor even then you have all the right to counter the uh, report because in many of the cases it is found that when doctor had not under uh, gone for post mortem later on allegations were put on doctor and it was said that to hide your negligence you had uh, not proceeded for post mortem so it is always better to ask for the post mortem whenever patient dies in four wall where the relatives have no access and where the cause of death is not 100% certain whenever uh, you inform police police used to come they come they take the charge of the body after doing panchnama they may take your statement and statement of the staff members they may demand document uh, if they demand document never hand it over the original copy hmm? ask them to get pm done hand over the body to the relatives uh, if uh, police gives uh, noc may file fir if fulfills requirement so uh, how to hand over document so basically never give original give xerox copy each page should be properly numbered on each page one should certify so it should be a certified copy total number of pages to be mentioned person to whom you are handing over should sign on receipt so even if police person are asking for the record he also should sign and give the acknowledgement of receipt of your documents uh, you must know how to manage legally legal management we must know what are your rights how to manage it socially how to break the bad news to whom to communicate uh, how can you can avoid the uh, mob and even if there is mob violence chances of apprehension of mob violence then how to tackle mob how to tackle media these are all the uh, different topics which need detailed uh, understanding so if patient and the relatives uh, goes to file fir so filing fir and arrest we must know at least these many things and if possible we must have uh, these judgments always ready in our consulting room so that we can show it to police person that you cannot file fir directly on complaint of the patient we must know what is jacob matthews versus state of punjab what is written in suresh gupta versus state of delhi and what is bolams versus frame hospital management committee case of 1957 so dear friends whenever the we apprehend any criminal uh, case against us then we can explain to the police not to file immediate fir and ask for the committee report uh, this video is not working i think and uh, you can see that one dog is waiting here so uh, the doctor who does not know law we always have fear in his mind that how to cross road or how to do practice and that's why we always tell that whenever doctor has uh, lack of knowledge uh, or legal knowledge then they should always take uh, advice from their senior from the same fraternity members they can take legal advice from the lawyers and they can take medical legal advice from the medical legal practitioner who can better guide them so dear friends thank you thank you very much uh, rajesh seminar thank you thank you very much